Hey, and hey. Everyone, welcome. I'm really glad that today on this show, I'm not going to be alone talking about Cloud Catalyst, but that I have uh, a community builder with me. Uh, hey, Andre, welcome to the show. Hey, Johans. Thank you for having me. Uh, Can you explain to the audience a little bit who you are, how we met, and um, yeah, what do you do? Yes, 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 of course I can. Uh, well, my name is uh, Henry Peters. I'm living in the Netherlands. I am 32 years old. I have two daughters and I'm living in the east side of the Netherlands, which is uh, yeah, a place called Zutphen. And for the last almost five years, I'm working for a company named Schubert Phyllis, which is focusing on uh, mission critical IT which basically means we have a big focus on keeping things running and uh, and going for our, yeah, our customers. Do you see yourself more as a developer or more as an operations person? No, that's, a, that's a good question. Well, I, I see myself more as an operation person, but yeah, I truly see myself, if it's a role, as a DevOps engineer because uh, I started out with uh, operations more in, into the Windows, VMware, and then I went to Linux and, and stuff like that. Did a lot of networking uh, in between. And that that's the, the part where I got my interest into coding a little bit more. So my background is more into uh, operations. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. And what, what, what brings us together, you and I, is not only the interest in Code Catalyst as a service, uh, but also that we, I think, are both builders at heart, um, at least the way that I got to know you so far. Uh, you are a community builder as well, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm actually a community builder in the serverless uh, category from the beginning of this year, so 2023. And uh, yeah, I got really happy. Uh, it, it was my second uh, try. So the first try I, I, I failed. And um, I actually written a blog about that. Maybe we can share it in the in the in the comment yeah. or, or description of this video. And it's it's a very interesting uh, program, and it uh, teaches uh, teached me a lot about myself and uh, AWS and the community and the people I uh, love to work with. Yeah, and I can only say the same. Um, I started in the community builders in two thousand and twenty two. Um, and um, the program is going to take new intakes, so new applicants at the beginning of January 2024. Yeah. Uh, so maybe at the time of this video getting out, uh, people might already be able to uh, sign up for the Community Builders uh, program. Um, so if you're a builder by heart and if you're really interested to get into the community to share knowledge, um, I can only also recommend this program, uh, which gives you fantastic insights into on the one side, how the community interacts, um, and on the other side, also into how AWS interacts with the community and with um, service teams and stuff like that, right? So I really uh, can encourage you to get into that. Yeah, yeah, I totally uh, agree. Yeah, it, there's a there's a big build uh, behind uh, AWS, and, and I mean with that the AWS community they are very. Uh, friendly and kind people also if when you go to uh, user, uh, uh, meetups or for example or community days uh, yeah. are and you going to a user group regularly Andre? yes 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 i'm actually uh, part of the aws user group uh, of the netherlands so i'm a yeah user group leader is, the, is is what it's called as well and that that means that uh, yeah, I'm involved in in the many things that the uh, user group organized. Uh, so, for example, the AWS Community Day, um, uh, hosting uh, meetups at companies and yeah, stuff like that. Cool. And we got an interesting topic to talk about today. So actually, I think you approached me to talk about this topic. Um, so can you tell us uh, what you are so excited about that you would like to talk about it? Yes, 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 of course. Well, um, not so long ago at my work, I did a talk about uh, the reInvent updates, uh, also uh, known around this time of the year as recaps. So, um, and I did a recap about uh, Amazon Q, which is the, uh, yeah, the, the chat uh, machine of uh, Amazon. So, uh, <laughs> Let me um, let me jump in there. Um, so 
I think Q is not only the chat engine. No. Q is, and this is why I'm exciting to have you on. Q is supposed to be your one and only assistant for building software on AWS. And yes. this is interesting. Your expert on your side. Yeah. yeah, it's more than just a chat. And I think that's what we're going to look at today, right? Um, yeah. So the, the, the part I'm, what I actually showcased on, on my demo at work was uh, using Q inside uh, Visual Studio Code, where it already shows a little bit uh, how, it's, how it's able to help you, mm -hmm. help you out. Um, yeah, it was able to generate code, insert code at places in, in my, uh, where my cursor was at uh, in my text file. Um, help me think about uh, possible solutions and stuff like that, which really, uh, yeah, turns your productivity uh, uh, way up. So that, that's why I get uh, enthusiastic about. And maybe what, it, what uh, I'm even more enthusiastic about is that... Uh, when I was looking at the Code Catalyst uh, page, that that Q also uh, is integrated with uh, Code Catalyst now, and you can enable it, um, and that brings me to the idea that you can turn concepts into, yeah, a re real working application. Cool. And what I find fascinating is that you haven't tried that before. So in your current uh, setup in Code Catalyst, you have not really looked at it you have not activated it and this is a great experience for others that want to do the same so in the next few minutes we're going to look at how to activate q uh, in your code catalyst space uh, we are again then going to uh, try out um, some of the pieces that q is able to do and then we are also planning to do another video where we're going to look at uh, the different other features that q also offers um, at the time of recording this video which is at the end of december 2023 with that, Henry, I would propose let's just get started, maybe, right? Yes. And let's um, get into uh, looking at your screen, um, logging into Code Catalyst. And uh, while you bring up the stuff that uh, bring up your screen, let me just um, for people that haven't looked at my channel yet, um, just Code Catalyst is an integrated DevTools service um, that AWS uh, has announced in 2022. Uh, we're now in the second year with the service, um, which went to GA in April 2023. Um, and uh, we are yeah, seeing a lot of changes coming in. Uh, and one of them is this functionality. I think it's available in preview, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, yeah. let's get going. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Let's start my screen sharing. Can you see and it? Yes, I can see your Google screen. That's perfect. Well, let's uh, go to the... Uh, should have it somewhere here. Hello. That's a new... <laughs> I don't have my uh, tabs in my... Uh, Incognito go to window. go to codecatalyst.aws and we are done. Well, this is actually in, maybe even more interesting because I haven't even uh, signed up for AWS Code Catalyst as a service. So ah, cool. Well, I guess uh, that that means I'm going to sign up <coughs> instead of sign in. I've been using somebody you, else's uh, environment. Okay. Do you have a builder ID already set up? Uh, yes, I do have it. Yeah. Then you can directly sign in with the builder ID. Um, so. Well, let me grab my password from another screen, which I think is not sure. Of course. There we go. And sign in. Okay, well, it signs me into the uh, Dutch user group. Uh. That's not a problem. Let's create a space on the right-hand side. Um, up there, there is create space. We're going to create a space just for you. Um, and you will well, need the, the AWS account ID uh, to connect this to. Uh, okay, I can get that. Well, let's first just give it my name, I guess, instead of uh, if you have other uh, suggestions. It doesn't matter. 
Okay. Then I will take my account ID. I cannot and enter a uh, alias, right? Uh, no, you will need to enter the account ID itself there. Well, then give me a few more <laughs> seconds. Not a problem. Important. Really important. Amazing. So this is not going as I was hoping it to go on. That's not a problem and we can we can take out some stuff as well. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I need this email address. So space name is already taken. Well, that's interesting. Maybe because it's just claimed my full name somehow, or maybe you have just a common name. Well, the last name of me is yeah, is pretty common <laughs> in the Netherlands. But uh, yeah, well, let me call it Skaba, which is my uh, handle. And I guess I go with Ireland. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now we have been able to verify the AWS account, uh, but I think um, in order to activate Q, there's some more stuff that we need to do and rewrite. So maybe you can uh, share the other screen as well. Yes, um, let me and give that a go. show those options yeah so I'm just going to share my entire uh, yeah great so what happened when I clicked on create space or even before that when I entered my AWS account ID it wanted oh gee I have to be careful clicking uh, it wanted to uh, uh, verify uh, my account with a verification token which brought me to the second screen. Well, I already clicked on uh, 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 on verify, but what I think it's important for if you want to use Q is to also check this checkbox, which is for uh, authorizing your account to also use paid tiers, uh, because I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong, Johannes, that the enterprise uh, tier uh, contains the Q uh, features. So that's why I also uh, clicked on this. Then I clicked on the verify button, uh, which turned into the approved part over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just now going to continue with creating this space. Okay, this means that we really start from fresh. There is no project, there is nothing created. And um, now let's go to the next step, right? How do we activate Q? Yep. Uh, well, let's go in blank. 
I think it's in the uh, settings of the space, not your settings, but the settings of the space. So um, over there. Probably. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Installed extensions, maybe. Not sure if it's there. I believe it's under billing. Oh yeah, we can change the bidding tier. Okay, and there we see also the comparison. So I think this is really cool. Uh, one of the ba one of the things that I like very much here is that compute minutes and stuff like that scales with the number of users that you add to the enterprise tier. If you could scroll down a little bit, this pricing overview page should also show somewhere the queue inclusion or not. Um, maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's something if you can. Okay, uh, down there. Is. There we are, right? So, yeah. This is what we want to look per at. Per user per month, up to 300 per space. Okay. Per month. So, I guess that means that Q is able to create an actual 20 of pull requests. Yeah, well, user. actually, the standard tier would be good enough based on what you see here, right? Uh, pull request generated by Amazon Q development capability. This is what we want to look at. So we don't need to go to enterprise. We can stick to the standard tier if we want to. Um, but That's interesting. I didn't know that. So already learned something. And I did not know that either. So we both learned something, which is amazing. <laughs> um, so let's let's try to set it up, right? So for that, we will need to change the the tier, um, the thing that comes on top of um, of the queue feature from st when it's going from standard to enterprise tier is the custom blueprints. Mm. I've been extensively <coughs> talking about that, uh, and um, there's a lot of good videos on my channel as well. But I think for queue we can go with the stand with the standard tier for now, which is only four dollars per month for every active member. So let's just do that. Yeah. Which in my case, I guess it means just four dollars a month since I'm the only member. Okay, that's interesting. This account does not authorize billing under the following tier standard. Okay, maybe it needs just... some more time, or there's something else. Maybe let's go back to the account setting um, in the AWS console. Exactly, let's go there. And let's see what it says. Okay, stop up there. Billing details. It says current tier, allowed tiers. So please go to edit on the right hand side and there select we go. that again. And I don't know. I thought you did that before, but yeah, I think uh, I clicked the uh, click the button, but maybe uh, maybe yeah, it didn't take it. Okay, let's go back to Code Catalyst now. Let's reload the page. And let's try it again. Oh, well, is there a save button or it already uh, accepted it? <laughs> Good question. Maybe it already yeah. accepted it. Let's yeah. just go back to billing and see what it looks like. We're still on the standard tier. Yeah, but we came from the we free, are. free yeah. tier. So, yeah. Cool. This means. Yes, you're now a paid paid user of Code Catalyst, which is something that I personally never did in my last 16 months with Code Catalyst. So um, you're the first one to do this. Um, I now, use the now or no, it doesn't work. It, it should work somehow. Um, yay! Cool. So um, now let's go over and uh, yeah, try it out. So. I think with this, um, we're going to stop this recording. Uh, we're going to uh, pause here. So in the last 20 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever the recording will be when we cut out the pieces that took us a little bit longer, what we did was uh, we looked at um, Amazon Code Catalyst Q, activated it, uh, set up a space uh, for it. Um, and uh, now the next step, and maybe we can start that in this recording, is going to be we're going to create a project um, that we can uh, work with. Let's just do that, um, Andre. Let's go ahead and create yeah. a project. Um, and then uh, maybe you can 
uh, maybe you already have an idea what we want Q to develop um, and we can uh, think about what that could be. So please. Um, yeah, I was thinking when I brought my kids to uh, grandma this morning, I should ask my daughter for an idea, but oh, <laughs> I forgot to do so. So uh, <laughs> that won't help us. But uh, maybe we yeah, can maybe start we... from scratch, but then we will need to set up the project ourselves, right? Um, so maybe let's uh, let's go with um, one of the blueprints that we have down here. So um, you know, a simple I, one. I know all of the ones, so um, <laughs> we yeah. could either do the single page application, which is on the left hand side, or we can do the static uh, website, whatever you believe is better. Um, I think the single page application gives us more possibilities um, to yeah. uh, then uh, play around with ideas, right? So uh, let's choose the framework that you like um, in setting up this project. So, so Angular, uh, React, or Vue. Uh, you have to go to you can go to next oh okay I, I was yes. already thinking i don't need to click it here right no no, no you can go next to next down there Change. Um, okay yes. i have a, i have an idea i will call it text calculator let's let's cool. build a text calculator a simple and one then you <laughs> then you can go with angular reactor view whatever you like okay i'll go with view Go to additional configurations down there, please. And oh. you can choose the region, which oh. is strange, oh. by the oh. way, because I would want to go to do it in, in, in Europe, right? Yeah, yeah um, we, but um, it doesn't. Uh, that's a feedback that we can give to the team. Well, then I go with uh, the first one. OK, and you will need to add an IM role here. Um, so um, we haven't set up an iron role for this account yet, uh, which means that we don't have permissions to do deployments yet. Uh, okay. This is what we're going to do now. Um, so I always leave the name like that. So just go to create development role on the right hand side, and this is what is going. This is the role that is going to be used to actually do the deployments. Let me, um, uh, if you don't mind, click on this. Of course, go ahead. Quick, uh, have of a course. quick view. So go ahead. it's going to allow everything oh that's interesting that, you that, can that. protect that of course right so right. it gives you the possibility to set up your own roles you can even do this into a different aws account than the billing account right uh, for the purpose of the demo i always leave it at everything uh, yeah. but if you set this up for your uh, for real usage later i would encourage you to limit uh, the regions and or something else that you would want to uh, limit. yeah so if you only want to deploy to uh, amplify or something else and then limit the scope uh, of this uh, this thing this is not a production uh, or even development uh. that's correct Okay. Okay. Good. But, good to but know in, that. In, in theory, you would go to an account that is only for this specific deployment, which would then be protected through SCPs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Cool. Okay. So now we're done with the role. Let's go back to the project setup in Code Catalyst. Oh, it brought me to the. Uh... And now you should be able to select the role over there. Um, so if you look a little bit up. Um, select yeah. that role that we just created. Um, you can give the repository a different name. Um, so just I would also use tax calculator here. And then you can give the stack name something that looks good. <laughs> okay, something like this. Okay, and then we're going to hit create project. And now we're going to end this recording, Andrew. Um, yeah. Looking forward to um, in the next uh, recording look at how uh, how is Q actually going to look like in this project. Um, so thanks a lot for this first part, and uh, oh, see welcome. you back. See you back soon, and of course we're going to add social links and everything that uh, you have um, in uh, in the in the videos um, as well, so people can reach out to you later. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good idea. Yeah, thanks, and thanks for being my. Uh, Q along this uh, <laughs> this session guiding me through uh, Code Catalyst. Was, uh, we're not we're not yet there, right? So what we learned today is that in order to use Q, 
uh, in code catalyst you don't need uh, the enterprise tier as Andrea and I thought uh, you only need the standard tier um, which is uh, four dollars per user uh, in the space uh, which makes it pretty cheap um, yeah. because it can really take a lot of um, uh, responsibilities from you and this is what we're going to see in the next recording yeah. so Andrea see you back soon see you thanks <laughs>